Welcome to Medical Lectures channel. In this video, we are going to discuss permanent mandibular canine. General characteristics. The mandibular canine is the third tooth from the midline in each lower quadrant. It is a replacement for deciduous mandibular canine. It shares mesial contact with the mandibular lateral incisor and distal contact with mandibular first premolar. Labial aspect of mandibular canine. The labial aspect of mandibular canine is pentagonal in shape. It is not so convex mesiodistally as the maxillary canine, but is more convex than the mandibular incisors. Mesial outline of the labial aspect is a straight line from the mesial contact to the cervical line. The mesioincisal angle is obtuse. The crust of curvature of this margin is near the mesioincisal angle and it is associated with the contact area in the incisal third. Distal outline of the labial aspect is convex incisocervically with a rounded distoincisal angle. The distal margin is shorter than the mesial margin. The height of contour is present at the junction of incisal and middle third. Distal contact area is located more cervically as compared to the mesial contact area. Incisal outline. The cusp is not as long or sharp as the maxillary canine cusp. The distoincisal slope is longer and much steeper than the mesoincisal slope. Since the distoincisal slope of mandibular canine occludes with the mesoincisal slope of maxillary canine. After attrition, the cusp tip is displaced mesially and a lengthening of the distoincisal slope takes place. The cervical line on the labial aspect is curved towards the root. The labial surface is longer incisocervically as compared to the maxillary canine. The labial ridge is not as prominent as it is present in the maxillary canine. The labial ridge divides the labial aspect into two, resulting in developmental depressions. Imbrication lines are absent in the mandibular canine. Height of contour is located in the cervical third. Lingual aspect. Lingual aspect mesial margin, distal margin and incisal margin are seen as that of the labial aspect. The cervical line curvature depth is more on the lingual aspect as compared to the labial aspect. The lingual surface is smooth. Cingulum and marginal ridges are present, but they are not so prominent. There is less pronounced lingual ridge and shallow lingual fossa in the mandibular canine. The lingual surface is narrower mesiodistally than the labial surface. The height of contour on the lingual surface is present in the cervical third. Mesial aspect. Labial margin, the entire labial outline is convex with greatest rounding at the height of contour in the cervical third. Lingual outline is same as that of the maxillary canine except the cingulum convexity is less prominent. Incisal margin is thinner labiolingually. The cervical line is curved incisally. The mesial surface is triangular in shape. The contact area on the mesial surface is located in the incisal third. The contact area is ovoid in shape and wider incisogingivally than labiolingually. Distal aspect. The distal surface is similar to the mesial surface except that it is slightly smaller in all dimension. The distal contact area is present at the junction of incisal and middle third. The distal surface, just like mesial surface, is also triangular in shape. Incisal aspect. From incisal aspect, this tooth is quite similar to the maxillary canine. The crown is thicker labiolingually towards the mesial surface. Cingulum is offset towards the distal surface. Root. The root is single 
straight and longest root in the mandibular arch. The lingual portion of root is narrower mesiodistally. Both labial and lingual surfaces are convex. Both mesial and distal surfaces are flattened or concave. In root, there are concavities that extend cervico-apically.